Okay, just going to go through and refute this, this nutty heresy by the new IFB cultist Tommy McMurtry, where in, in typical non-dispensationalist fashion, he'll say that people in the Old Testament went to heaven like people in the New Testament do, uh, say people in the New Testament. And this is the, the heresies that come from the satanic heresy of non-dispensationalism, is they make a total mess of the Bible. And he'll twist scriptures, and I'm going to show you scripture proving that this nutty heresy that, because here's the thing, Amongst the whole so-called IFB movement, you know, the new IFB, are they're the minority that preach this doctrine of non-dispensationalism. You see, they're bringing in a new doctrine that has not been preached by Christians and that not taught in the Word of God. So, the new IFB is a product of the end times falling away. They're bringing in new heresies that Christians have historically rejected and not believed in, but then claiming, oh, we're the historic, you know, faith, we're the historic Baptist. I'm not even a Baptist, but... Uh, I know that most independent Baptists reject the new IFB and know that their heresies are not the historic doctrines of independent fundamental Baptist churches. They're bringing in a new doctrine and new heresies. But this is the, the nutty heresy you get yourself into when you're non-dispensational, saying that people in the Old Testament went to heaven like people did in the New Testament, which is ridiculous because nobody in the Old Testament had their sins forgiven and totally washed away like, say, people in the New Testament do. Because Hebrews chapter 9 verses 15 to 19 to talk about how the New Testament basically the New Testament did not begin till the death of the testator, which is Jesus Christ the New Testament did not officially begin till after the death of Jesus Christ when their sins were forgiven again, see Hebrews chapter 9 verse 15 to 18 on that, so they could not go to heaven back in the Old Testament because they didn't have their sins forgiven, they were not I mean the animal sacrifices did cover their sins I showed that in another video showed scriptures proving that the animal sacrifices did cover the sins but they didn't wash away all their sins like the blood of Jesus Christ does. So they cannot get access to heaven. That's why I'm going to show you scriptures which talk about how the kings in the Old Testament dying and sleeping with their fathers. Since when are you sleeping in heaven? They're down there sleeping. I mean, why is there a resurrection of Old Testament saints? Why are they coming up out of the ground if they're in heaven already? And, you know, it's ridiculous. But I'm going to play this video and just show you how he just twists and contorts the scriptures to prove his satanic non-dispensationalism. In the Old Testament... That's what they were saying. These are the people, too, these guys that are preaching this junk are the ones that the old IFB is using to try to defeat us and what we teach on end times because they can't handle it. Because they don't, they don't know their Bible. I agree with Bill Grady when he said that about them being you know, scripturally illiterate, something along those lines. But let me show you just some verses that prove Old Testament saints went to heaven. They say, no Old Testament saints went to heaven. Yes, they did. Old Testament saints went to heaven. Let me quickly go through these. Matthew chapter 22, verse 29. They could not have been in Hades. They could not have been in Sheol. Well, right. yeah, I, another one of the nutty heresies these guys have is that they deny that Abraham's bosom was a real place. They think that they deny Abraham's bosom, which is, again, another one of their new heresies they're bringing in, trying to claim that, oh, it's the historic doctrine of independent Baptists when it's not. Um, they're denying that Abraham's bosom exists because he Hades, hell, had two compartments. There was hell where the lost people went, and then there was Abraham's bosom. And the Old Testament saints went to Abraham's bosom. Again, that's why I'm going to show you scriptures which talk about a king dying and sleeping with his fathers. You know, you all know the passage in Luke 16, which talks about Abraham's bosom and how the rich man dies is in hell, and then he sees Abraham, he sees the, the Abraham and, and the and Lazarus on the other side, and there's a great gulf fixed between the two. So there's obviously two compartments down there. But again, if you reject that then you're going to get into all kinds of heresy like this guy does. Or the grave. They could not have been in the place of the dead. You know why? Because God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Matthew 22, 29, Jesus answered and said to them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but as the angels of God in heaven. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. Jesus said, I'm not the God of the dead. So, if they um, Notice how it says they were astonished at his doctrine, meaning they didn't know this previously. That's called dispensationalism. Things are revealed over time. F funny how you can't see that. But again, they're lost. They can't understand scripture. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are in the place of the dead. Then they're dead, right? You know, but they're being no, no, they're down there sleeping in Abraham's bosom. Again, doesn't understand scripture at all. Oh, there, you know, but no, 
If you believe you went to hell or Hades or Sheol, the place of the dead, then they were there because they were dead. Um, yes, they were dead. They did not have their sins forgiven. Again, read Hebrews chapter chapter uh, 9, verse 15 to 18. The New Testament, their sins were not cleansed. I mean, read the whole chapter of Hebrews 9. Their sins were not cleansed until after the death of Jesus Christ. So they could not go to heaven. There's no way. Because the animal sacrifices, it would cover their sins, but it would not totally cleanse their sins, past, present, and future. So they could not get access to heaven until the perfect sacrifice happened. But God said, I am not the God of the dead, but of the living. Well, if they were living, what does that mean? That means has to mean they're in heaven. Okay? Living people aren't in very, the Very, very weak argument, by the way. So, because God's not the God of the dead, that, that proves that Old Testament saints are in heaven. What? Very, very weak argument. Place of the dead. Living people don't live in the grave, or Sheol, or hell. They don't live in any of those things. Right there, I think that's proof. Enoch and Elijah are proof. Yeah, well, there's exceptions. I mean, there were people that went to heaven that were taken up to heaven. But th but that doesn't mean that every single person who died in the Old Testament who was an Old Testament saint went to heaven before the crucifixion. A lot of straw man arguments, but typical for for non dispensationalist heretics to use straw man arguments. Just going to skip ahead here. They show a clip from the the conference about Anderson. Being held, it says in Genesis five twenty four, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. God. He goes to the exceptions. Yeah, there were exceptions of people going to heaven in the Old Testament. That does not prove that every single Old Testament saint went to heaven. Straw man argument. I took him. If if I take something of yours and you want to find it, where are you going to find it? You're going to find it with me. Where's God? God's in heaven. God didn't. God didn't. It didn't say he was not for God put him. You know, it says no. God took him. God didn't put him somewhere else in some special part. No, he took him. He was in heaven with God. So well, that's not clear enough for me. We'll try this one on for size. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Verse 11. And it came to pass when they still went on and talked that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and the horses of fire and parted them both asunder and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Nobody yes, Elijah did, but that does that mean that every single person, every single saint in the Old Testament did? No, it doesn't. It just means that Elijah was taken up to heaven. I'm going to skip ahead a bit more. Mercy seat in heaven. Nobody in the Old Testament went to heaven. Well, except Elijah and Enoch. Well, wait a minute. I thought nobody could go into heaven until the blood had been applied. Yeah, and the blood was not applied until after the death of Jesus Christ. But again, you see these satanic non-dispensationalist heresy, they'll say people in the Old Testament were saved by looking forward to the cross, which is ridiculous and, and nutty, because in Luke chapter 24, Jesus is, right after the crucifixion happens, this is after the crucifixion, Jesus is telling his disciples that, you know, what just happened, basically fulfilled what was written in the prophets, written in the Psalms, you know, don't you believe it? And the apostles were like, no, we don't, you know, we don't believe it. You know, they, they didn't understand what just happened. So if it was if it was an Old Testament belief that basically saints in the Old Testament were just looking forward to the cross, I mean, if that was the case, if saints in the Old Testament were looking forward to the cross and if they're already being saved by the death of Jesus Christ before the death of Jesus Christ, what was the point of him even coming and dying on the cross anyway? If they're already being saved by that method, what was the point of him even coming to earth anyway? See, it's just you get into so many heresies, so many errors when you're non-dispensational, so many uh, nutty cultic heresies. So why did Elijah get an exception? Because this was clearly before Jesus died on the cross. What's going on? Here's more proof. Well, Elijah and Enoch, they're special. They're separate. They probably got a special place in heaven. Well, you know what? Matthew chapter 17, verse 1 shows there's somebody else who is also in heaven from the Old Testament. It says, And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. How did Moses get out of good hell? Jesus hadn't gone down there and, you know, had... You see how they're, hear how they're mocking the doctor? Oh, good hell, you know. See how they're mocking? They're mockers. They're blasphemers. His great battle scene and conquered everybody yet. How did he get Moses out of hell? Moses did die. And God went and buried him somewhere. Moses died. 
and Moses is seen with Elijah, who had been taken up to heaven. So guess what? Moses was in heaven before the blood had been shed at Calvary. Right there, Psalms 116, verse 13. It says, I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will call upon the name of the Lord. Interesting. And I will pay my vows on the Lord, now in the presence of all His people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. Sluter said that we need to clean up our terminology and stop saying Old Testament saints. Well, I'm sorry. In the Old Testament, it says precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. Who was he talking about if there weren't any Old Testament saints? Okay, so he goes on his little ranch, but so Moses, uh, Enoch, and Elijah prove that Old Testament saints went to heaven because they went to heaven. You know, ridiculous. Let me show you some scripture. Because this, go in your King James Bible and just search up slept with his fathers, and you'll have all these scriptures come up which deal with sleeping with his fathers. You see, in all these scriptures here, 1 Kings 2.10, 1 Kings 11.21, 1 Kings 11.43, 1 Kings 14.20, 1 Kings 14.31, 1 Kings 15.8, 1 Kings 15.24, 1 Kings 16.6, 1 Kings 16.28, 1 Kings 22.40, 1 Kings 22.50, uh, 2 Kings 8.24, going to list off all these. 2 Kings 8 or 10 35, 2 Kings 13 9, 2 Kings 13 13, 2 Kings 14 16, 2 Kings 14 22, uh, 2 Kings 14 29, 2 Kings 15 7, 2 Kings 15 22, uh, 2 Kings 15 38, 2 Kings 16 20, 2 Kings 20 21, 2 Kings 21 18, 2 Kings 24 6, or 2 Chronicles 9.31, 2 Chronicles 12.16, 2 Chronicles 14.1, 2 Chronicles 16.13, 2 Chronicles 21.1, 2 Chronicles 26.2, 2 Chronicles 26.23, 2 Chronicles 27.9, 2 Chronicles 28.27, 2 Chronicles 32.33, and 2 Chronicles 33.20 all mention a king dying and sleeping with his fathers, that he slept with his fathers. But if they're in heaven, how does that work? I mean, are you sleeping in heaven? Are you sleeping with your fathers in heaven? No. When you're in heaven, you're you're uh, conscious. You're not asleep in heaven. What is it talking about? And he slept with his fathers. Well, of course, the infamous, you know, for the new IFB, it's infamous because they try to say, you know, it debunks their whole system anyway, of, oh, there's no Abraham's bosom. Luke 16, verses 19 to, I think I'll start. Luke 16, verses... I'll just start at verse 21. Uh, Luke 16, verse 21. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. Um, where in the Bible are you carried by angels into heaven? When you die, you're just absent from the body present with the Lord. There's no angels carrying you up to heaven. Look at this. So here you have the rich man. Verse 23, And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. So he's seeing him afar off. He's not in heaven, unless you can somehow look through the earth, you know, and, and look all the way up to heaven. You know, he's not in heaven. He's in Abraham's bosom. This is confirmed or later on. Uh, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the finger in the, of the sorry, dip the tip of his finger in water to cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. So you have water over in Abraham's bosom, fire over in hell. So there's obviously two compartments down there. Uh, and obviously the underworld has other compartments too. There's also the chains of darkness where the angels are held. And you can see that in Jude chapter one, verse six. You also have um, the bottomless pit where obviously the locusts are in Revelation 9 and you have obviously the same thing same place where Satan will be bound in for a thousand years during the millennial kingdom the bottomless pit obviously then you also have the lake of fire which is the final judgment the final destination for Satan and his angels as well as the lost world but again you see you have different compartments down there in the underworld and for hell you have two compartments you have uh, hell and Abraham's bosom verse 25 but Abraham said said son Remember that thou in that lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil, evil things, but he is but he, now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. So he's being comforted, Lazarus is, and the rich man is being tormented. And, and look at verse 26. And beside all this between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, 
so that they which would pass from thence from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. You know, how do you get around that? There's a gulf fix, so it's obviously not heaven, because I, I remember Anderson trying to say that, you know, Abraham's bosom is in heaven and that the that basically Lazarus is in heaven. So how is there a gulf fixed from the heart of the earth to the clouds? You know, how do you how do you do that? It it doesn't work. This is there's two compartments that are down there. And again, since when are people sleeping in heaven? Since when are you sleeping with your fathers in heaven? They're not. And again, another good proof on this, and also a good proof to basically, you know, destroy this whole thing of Jesus being in hell, basically suffering in hell to pay for your sins. Luke chapter twenty-two. Uh, where is it? Sorry, wasn't uh, was it Luke twenty-two? Sorry, it was Luke 20, I believe it was Luke 23, sorry, not verse 22. Sorry about that. Got the verses mixed up. Uh, yeah, Luke chapter 22, verse 43. Here's a good proof text to refute this thing of Jesus Christ, this heresy that Jesus Christ went to hell to pay for your sins. Luke chapter 23, verse 43. And Jesus said unto them, or said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that uh, today thou sh shalt thou be with me in paradise. So he's saying you'll be with me in paradise. So if he's in hell, I mean, is paradise hell? No, you'll be with me in paradise. What's he talking about? Abraham's bosom. So he's going to be with Jesus in Abraham's bosom. So unless paradise is hell, you know, how do you get around that? Obviously, paradise is not hell. Then, of course, you have the resurrection of Old Testament saints after the crucifixion. Again, if they're in heaven, why is there a resurrection of Old Testament saints coming up from under the ground? How does it, you know, how do you get around that? It doesn't work. There's two compartments down there. Matthew chapter 27, verses 52 to 53. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, after his resurrection, so they were not in heaven, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. So they're coming out of the ground and going up to heaven. They're not already in heaven. So why do you have a resurrection of Old Testament saints if they're already in heaven? It doesn't work. It's heresy. So saying that Old Testament saints went to heaven is the heresies you get yourself into when you're non-dispensational. So non-dispensationalism produces all kinds of heresies, post-trib, rapture, replacement theology, all this satanic heresy. So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.